Hey guys, um, as we get started, can I ask a question about chapter four? Sure, sure, go ahead. Um, I'm just, I was reading through it and I just got to this, to the part where it talks about a sparse geometry binary predicate. Yep, an SGBP. <laughs> yeah, and uh, that's, that's where I left off and um, just so I didn't try to read anything further, but I just have a hunch that that the concept is going to be a little difficult. So I, I wanted to see if anybody has like a um, like a, an easy explanation of it. Yeah, um, I have a blog post that used them a bit so that we can help you. Uh, that's go slowly into some example. Like uh, maybe we can review. I feel. Uh, okay. So did you understand like, like this D, E, 9, uh, Y, M matrices? Let's go into it. Like I, I like the Wikipedia page. Yeah, I think I understood that. I mean, it's, it's a comparison where you get to see what um, intersects with the other. Yeah. yeah. yeah this view. So this is it. Like, so basically, if you have two polygons, they can intersect themselves in a various way. So, the, so they can be. And, and this is not necessarily um, exclusive. So usually, like uh, if these two intersect, they can uh, they can be like, for example, uh, the interior of A and the interior of B. Then the border of B and a border of A. Sorry, reverse A and B. And um, that's it mostly. And the points. Yeah, just to they are matching together here. So when you describe the relation they have, uh, it's basically like uh, you can sum it up as some number. So when interior and interior, it's mean two. When interior and boundary, uh, it, it's two because like uh, it's the number of dimension and this is an area. So an area of two dimension. Well, a boundary is of just one dimension. It's just uh, it have just its length, and sometimes they do not have any um, dimension. For example, if it's its point, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So basically, you can write all the relationship uh, as codes that look like that, and then you have a special character. Or you can also uh, write them as true or false, or with a with a special asterisk that means everything possible. So let's go into it. So I just rewrite it uh, here in the blog post. Same examples on the Wikipedia page. And basically, every kind of special predicate you can write. Uh, so yeah, it's just a function. So uh, well, I can I can I can just copy past. Uh, let's copy. Let me let me go open a new one new windows. All computers. Right. I have to remove that. It's probably a better way of doing that than what I'm doing right yeah. now. Okay, then like let's say like let's let's take one pattern at a time and just this this function is just to display the matrices as the wikipedia pages so just a, a wrapper that just make it like uh, easier for you to understand no <clears throat> that's it uh no like if you if we build that like i can do it also so this is just four polygons uh, where am I here? Not this one. Oops, this is just like it's super important, I feel uh in um in um how can I say in um with a computing environment to be able to quickly build a small example. And this is very an understood. I mean, it's very important skills 
that people like ignore and they should practice. And it's not easy by any kind of mean, but usually in the example of our uh, help main page, you have a lot of them that's, that's you can use. Okay, so this is the same result. If we just inspect, uh, do you hear me? Uh, so it's plot this square, like basically, like the whole. Uh, I'm I'm joining them together, and I attribute them the letter A from A B C D. Okay. So, so now we can test our predicate because, like, obviously, I have set up this example that it match a lot of different kind of solution. So. <clears throat> Let's use like ST relates. And I mean, I let's copy everything like because this is just uh, uh, let's do it slowly. I will, I will copy everything, but I will then uh, do it a bit more slowly. Okay. Anyway, the chapter today is quick, so we can probably spend a bit of time on that. Let's let's do like uh, an ST relates. Okay. And if I inspect it. Uh, it just returned me um, this, you know, these letters. And to make it more simple, like more readable, I will just change the name so it match the number of the square. So here you see this is Ocon A, which is the green one, relates to A, which is obviously the same. So they relate perfectly to each other. You have A to B, B is the orange one, so they relate only from one point, uh, they only interact by one point, et cetera, et cetera. So here I have just described how every polygon, every square relate to each other. And then this, this is just a string. This is just a, 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 like some characters. And then uh, if I want, we can also like do uh, more like, I can also investigate, know that I have name my table, uh, I can just uh, investigate it. But if I want to filter it with, let's say, some particular pattern, I can just write regular expression, which is like a way to interact with uh, string characters to, uh, to check what's matching this pattern. So I can write one pattern and see what are the case that match. And basically, what's uh, if you if you go like here, um, this is like another example. Like here, uh, you are like like here. This is like a function. So let's do exactly a sterilate with a specific kind of pattern because you do not need to write a regular uh, to to do some regular expression or to use some uh, strings operators to manipulate it. A sterilate already provide uh, a tool that help you match particular pattern. And here, like you have like the two one, like the queen, that's match um, everything that touch the borders. And you have the rook that match everything that touch the border, but not by one point. And if you check here, in yeah. fact, all of the, um, all of the classic, um, Operation, special <laughs> operation, special predicates uh, are um, as our pattern that you are using. Is it more clear now? Yeah. So uh, the question that that I still have. So that particular string, whether it's uh, yeah. two one zero zero one. Or if it's yeah, or if it's um, T star F star star, regardless, that string, um, each character in that string represents a, um, a a type of interaction between two polygons. Yeah, right? between two polygons. Yes. <clears throat> right, and so it, it doesn't. It, it, at that point, we haven't specified which polygons yet, but we know that the first position represents like interior interior yep and the second so, position represents border interior yes right okay. and so now we are moving slowly through it <laughs> yeah uh and we can represent that this is like a, a mat a, a, a not a sparse matrices this is the full matrix yeah 
but you can also represent that as a, uh, as a sparse matrices. So they are both the same, they're both represent the same, you know, like the true, false, false, true. That's basically mean like one is gonna match the indexes one, which is himself, and max uh, right. the indices four. And two is just gonna match itself with this pattern. And three just match itself within this pattern, and obviously four match one and four. So it's just another way of representing uh, these matrices, which is kind of complicated. You represent it with what's it's called a sparse general, general geometry binary predicate. And then this is just a list. So every operation that work on list can be uh, used on that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think I got it. Um, <clears throat> I get that that each each um, character in that string represents some way that two polygons are are interacting, and then uh, yeah. and then in the matrix that you have there towards the top where there's four rows and four columns, that's two specific um, polygons. That at that at uh, at that four. point. Um, four versus four. Uh, right, all right, sorry. Yeah, four specific polygons. Um, okay, yeah, I, th I think I get it. Um, I'll read up a, a little bit more about it, but I get the idea. Yeah, it's, it's totally like, um, it's a bit non-intuitive at the beginning because it's usually hided uh, behind the scene of the tool you use, but all the tools use that. <laughs> yeah. It's just like very powerful when you understand it because sometimes you have questions that can be, that does not match with the classical, um, you know, the classical predicate you are using. Like, I mean, most of let's say, let's to be fair, like most of the time you are gonna use intersect uh, and disjoin, or like there are already made uh, functions that match it. But yeah. sometimes, even if you use a disjoint, uh, you can also ask it for it returns a sparse binary uh, matrix. Um, where is it? I, I, I'm always like SPGD, like whatever the name of it is. Yeah, uh, it's, yeah, like you can also, no, it's supposed, where is it? Do they do not have like an example here? Uh, let me, I, I think they show it here. Length uh, with an S. Mm -hmm. Where is it? Yeah, no. That, yeah. A, um, I, oh, I it's yeah. Yeah, you have one also. Yeah. See, so you have a sparse geometry binary predicate list. But here, uh, it's just check if it's inside of something. And if you want to check uh, if it's inside of something, this is just uh, if, the vector, if the vector inside of the list elements is empty, it will have a le length uh, without the S of zero. So you can check all the lengths of all the elements of the list by using another function that's called length <laughs> with a s. That's that's just um, oh, sorry. That just uh, we just uh, return like uh, vectors that have true or false of every one of the summit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Um, <clears throat> the word predicate itself, though, what? I, what does that mean? I, I mean, I only remember that in relation to sentences. So, oh, the because like what what all of them like what we are calling like this touch uh, inside intersect. They are what we call special predicates. They are trying to predicate the relation of let's say x and y here, the summit of New Zealand versus uh, one provinces, I guess, of uh, New Zealand. Yeah. Okay, makes um, sense. You are trying to get like this predicate. This is how I understand it. Maybe also like have something okay. to say about it. Very good. Okay, thank you. But Thanks for taking the time. No, it's it's very like it. I, I think this is something like play a bit with it, write some code, test it, and yeah, you will understand it. Uh, okay, let's go. Uh, to chapter six. So it's a quick chapter. So maybe we can chat a bit later. So uh, I think the learning objective. Uh, so we are, what we are going to see, like, uh, that, can I start? Is everyone fine? I guess. <laughs>
Yep. All so, good. So sometimes, you know, you want to change uh, from raster to vector or to vector to raster or to use because like you have like, let's say the classical example usually is a, is a, a digital elevation model where you have like an elevation and you want to calculate, let's say the medium, median elevation, the mean elevation of some places or other stuff like that. This is what we are going to see today. And uh, we're going to see like how we can switch to uh, raster uh, to vector or vector to raster. Um, uh, yeah. As they say, uh, I think it's important to remember like it's sometimes um, some um, discipline, like some science discipline, uh, tend to use more raster or tend to use more vectors. And they produce some data that will maybe you will need to change. So we, what we're going to see, you're going to see like raster cropping and masking. What's the differences and how do you apply them together? Extracting raster value with vector data, right? Just I was explaining. And the, finally, the conversion between both of them. For that, we are just going to load uh, SF, Tira, and, and GPlyer. I like the message because like uh, they are important someone to remember, like especially lag, I feel this is the one that I always forget, but yeah. Okay, raster cropping and masking. One like very common problem uh, is many, like usually when you are downloading uh, a SRTM um, digital elevation model, it came from uh, depending, as you are like, this, the zone is too small, then you will need to mosaic them or adjust them. Or as well, the zone is too big and this data can be huge and you want to just adjust them to your needs. So the solution is cropping and mas masking. So let's go. Um, I, I will at the same time. Uh, so this can be closed, I guess. Yes, consider that. Uh, let's load everything because I like doing it also sometimes at the same time. Uh, my environment is empty, but yeah. Okay, take a bit of time. Uh, then uh, we, we are going to use the Rust uh, to read the file from uh, the package. So it's inside of the package. This file exists in your computer, so you're going to read it. And we are going to read the SRTM. Uh, English speaker, correct me, like, what SRTM stand for? I have learned it, but I forget it. Survey. Well, if you don't remember, that's fine. I will, I will just search it later, but it's, it's an acronym that means something. And we are going to read um, the border of the Nas Zion National Park, which is both of them are in Utah. So we are in Utah now. So I'm going to do it. And yes, this is like now you should be familiar with it. We're going to, I should have put this is an SF function that's uh, going to uh, transform <clears throat> uh, the border of Zion, the shape file we are downloading it with the uh, um, the coordinate reference system from the raster file we are learning. Then I've just plotted it. And uh, if you are like me, annoyed, like we can do it. This is the way, like if you want to have like uh, uh, from low elevation to high elevation in the classic terrain color. Because by default, uh, we can see that. I was super, I'm still super annoyed by that, but uh, I, I mean, it's kind of stupid because it's no big deal, but small details so let's work uh if the the if i uh comment that code i should have commented here oops android you know it's the reverse uh because by default if you check on the documentation uh you just have reverse of it this one and this is the stuff that we don't want so if you want to avoid that you just uh, specify it and here i keep the same numbers of 
color bins, but you can adjust that obviously. And here we are. So here, like we have cropped it. Why? What does it like? We are limiting the extent of the um, of the raster file to match uh, what's it's the minimum required to have a like a rectangle or a square uh, containing the B box, the bounding box. Sorry, of our um, uh, chip. I mean, it's not chip file of the of the uh, SF object. Okay. So no, this was like sorry, like this was the the full data. Yeah, I already like discussing what cropping is. It's just limiting the extent. Uh, so you use the crop function from the Terra package, <laughs> and that's it. Oh, I have like uh, something that's not correct. Uh, if you do not want like the value inside, this is what's called a mask. And a mask is basically applying a true false uh, on everything. Every single side is going to take a specific value by default NA, and everything inside will be kept. So yeah, you see, like I passed the the cyan uh, the SRTM um, object. That's why, like, it's not uh, as we have seen before in the cropped images, like we see here, here, here. You see, like we have way much space, and it's six space. Even if it's just like it's non uh, any value, which is still taking space. Well, you uh, the mask function, which is also from the Terra package, can also take inverse equal true. Then you will keep every single side of your polygon. I haven't took time enough to play how does this uh, function handle holes, but uh, this is something that should be like uh, I hopefully work well. But this is something that I'm always afraid. Like if you have a polygon that have a hole inside of it, uh, I I do not I'm not sure about the behaviors of the mask um, function. Hopefully it's well done. Uh, okay. So any question about that? This is like the I think raster uh, daily life bread and butters. Like you need to do that all the time, and I think this is super easy. I mean, as long as you know it works. So you need to, usually you are starting to crop to limit the extent, then you remove the information that you do not want. So, and it's also nice to start also doing maps. Okay, now that we have our raster data, maybe a lot of times that I say like, we want to extract specific information from a target. Uh, which is you, you know, a lot of time a vector, like let's say point line or polygon, uh, and and provide information on it, and we'll need to join this information later. The result obviously depend on the type of object. A point usually will have on the rasters. I mean, it's happened on sometimes that the point could be on the border of two uh, raster, but I think it's very 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 rare. Still. Uh, Lines, which you obviously can cross multiple uh, pixel of rasters or cells, and polygon that carry more than one. Let's start extracting points. So we are getting like some point which is inside of the uh, package. We can display them on top of everything. I'm not good with ggplot, so people feel free to to experiment with ggplot. Uh, hopefully, we will see more like how to make cool map uh, in the chapter nine. But I'm usually like, especially when I'm doing quick visualization, I just use base R. Uh, so we have these points. Now uh, we're gonna extract value on on every point. On it should make sense. But uh, no, this is not here. This is later. Uh, why I didn't do it? Well. I well, I forget that. So let's go into the book. Sorry about that. Let's go. It's in extraction and on the points. You are just using extract on points, and then you are combining it. Well, you know what? I'm just gonna 
afterwards. Let's go to the let's stands. Oh no, I have done it here, but like let's 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 run everything. And then let's check a bit more into detail. So if we check elevation here, we have basically like uh, an idea have been generated. Uh, it have like it's a data frame. Um, let's take like uh, two, uh, two dimension, like um, like times thirty. So because like the, the two columns ID and SRTM, SRTM is basically our elevation in meters, if I remember correctly. And uh, uh, it generated an ID of every point. Was it generated or was it inside of Zion points? I do not remember. So we can inspect it. No, it was generated. So Zion point does not have an ID column. It was generated here. And then we are just basically combining. Combining can be tricky in R because combining will just like put two um, an object of the same length together. Sometimes it can be confused with concatenate. We just like um, append them. And then you can like check now, like if I check uh, point elevation. Oops, sorry. I'm switching from Mac. And now you have like all the, um, the points that have like a geometry column and the SRTM. Okay, question. Now let's, let's go directly like extracting, it's not from point, it's from like a line. Now we have a line that was generated like uh, by uh, combining you, uh, two uh, points and passing them to a uh, line string object. Then inside, when you have like this line string object, like, let's do it more slowly. Yeah, let's go here. So let's first watch uh, what we are doing here, like the combine here. We just generated basically like a matrices uh, of two by two elements. Then uh, we are gonna pass that to a line string. So it's look if we want to, I don't know if you are familiar with pipe, so I will just go slowly once. This is nearly exactly the same as that. And you are uh, not lost in stupid parentheses if I can do it, but I like this. And here we have a line string, which uh, if I go here and I ask for class, I can also pass this new object to another function that's called class. And we know it's an X and Y object and a simple feature geometry that is a line string. We are gonna pass that to a new function that will define also its um, uh, it's a uh, CRS coordinate reference system to the one of the rasters. Let's go slowly into it. And now you see like it's not, uh, I should have passed it like to a, a class to see what it was, but yeah. Basically like now we have like a simple features uh, column that's just, uh, so it have like this headers file and it just contain like this link string, which is like two points link it together. Uh, then we are gonna use that uh, to transform that into an SF object. And here, yeah, this is the new shiny uh, plus holders. Um, it's a bit more complicated, but yeah, basically before like uh, with the uh, Magritte air pipe, it was the dot. No, it's this one. So it's basically like we are passing this all object into it, into like this plus holders. So it's pipe R a bit more complicated. So that's why I think like uh, this example, I think is kind of a bit complicated. Then we plot everything and we got it. To, to get information on the line, what we are basically do is like, we are basically dividing uh, the point, the line in a certain number of points. Uh, here I'm confused about the crud. Maybe you can help me here. 
they generate uh, an, an ID that's take the number of row. But as we see, we just have one row here. So I do, so if we generate it, like let's go here and we check what's uh, transect means now. I mean, you can also check it here. It's just like one ID, so I'm a bit confused on it. And uh, then we're gonna segmentize it uh, by using this argument that will ask, um, that will have a max length of 250. I have to recheck this argument because I'm like very confused about it, about what they say. With the provided densities, but so I assume like uh, the density is over like uh, a set. It, the density is a certain amount of points by a surface. Uh, some so here I assume it's a certain number of points, but I do not understand why uh, I get two hundred fifty. What should I get two hundred fifty or two hundred fifty-seven? I'm 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 getting two hundred fifty-seven, and I have I'm sure like everyone will get that too. So. Uh, could not find, uh, yes, obviously, missing. So now if you check like this line streak object, instead of just having two points, you create a bunch of nodes, I mean vertices, depending on how you call them, uh, over it. And you are gonna cast these points as, uh, I mean, these vertices. Uh, yeah, it would be good like to load QGIS and check like all of the, the nodes that have been created. Uh, I guess I can probably un do it. I'm, I'm curious if this is work as I think it works. Will and this work here? I don't know. I'm testing. Oh no, not exactly. I mean, yes, it unlisted, but way too much on the way I wanted it. So yeah, you have it. Uh, you have, you have like 257 uh, times two uh, new points. <laughs> uh, I don't know what's the correct way of doing it. And then you can cast it um, two points. So instead, I have a warning like saying like, um, because what I'm gonna, I'm gonna repeating uh, information and, it, but yeah, it's just empty. Like we just have like, uh, uh, what is it? It's just an the object just like the geometry. It's just a simple features uh, geometry. So it does not have um, let's say some value attached to it. So it's the warning is not very important, but it's nice to remember. Like if you are doing that over like some things that let's say if I was like if I had like uh, in let's say numbers from one to two hundred fifty seven, um, maybe it will not be perfect. Anyway. So that's it. Now we have like this object transect. If you check for it here, you will get not this one. Should be not too viable. So probably mess up something. Let's resend slowly. Well, why is it two points? Should be points. They miss something. Come on, it's here. It's weird. No, still two points. <laughs> Logically. What did I miss here? Uh, Yeah, it's my two points. Okay. We build it. The transect should be. Oh, yes. Yes. And if I check the lean string, it's fairly just two points. I'm gonna build this new one. Yeah. This is sometimes where like naming the object the same name is not a good idea. You can also no it comes. Uh, 
And then I'm going to cast it normally. I will have 277 observation, which is the correct uh, what we need, like a bunch of points. So let's go on the line. I do not know why. It, maybe I forget to pass something at one point. Anyway. Uh, and here, I'm not sure to understand why you need a group by, because the ID is always uh, one, because we just have one. If I, if I reach check like sign. Yeah, I do not even have an ID, so it's worse. Should have ID here. Yes, correct. So yeah, no, I have the ID, so that's good. So let's see if I do not keep the group by, what do I get? At distance. So I had the group by two. Smaller, take longer time. Let's check. I use that back quickly. Well, it generated some list from zero. So yeah, I, I do not understand here this cut. So, and uh, let's go against it. Oh yeah, I know. I know what error I've done. So let's restart that one. Then uh, let's call it this one A and calling this one D. Sorry about it. Yeah. Take a longer time because it's grouping by every ID, but that does not produce. So this is A, and then this is B with group by. Yeah, I, I do not get the group by uh, because obviously, like, it's grouping by the distance, the difference between like every point every and you just have one point so one distance from one is just zero uh, times the number we have so i have commented that and i will have to ask letters if you comment that and uh, and then extract for every point what we have done combine it and then if you want to draw it we obtain the same of what the book so i guess like maybe do some of you have an idea <laughs> Because here, to my understanding, what the group by is doing is going to check the distances between every uh, ID between the ID. And this is not what we want to do. We just want to generate a distance between every point. So I missed something here. Do some of you have an ID? It's fine if you do not have. No. But yeah, this was like, uh, I was like, uh, this does not work as, uh, as I think it worked. And if you come on that line, uh, it work as it should work. Well, I'm sorry for my best are like not labeling stuff. But yeah, you get like what you expect to get. Uh, then uh, we're going to do it like uh, if we want to uh, extract value for the whole polygon. So yeah, we will want to extract all the value from um, this uh, SRTM from Zion. Imagine it's built quite a big object. Like you have a lot of, um, if you check it now, it's quite a big object with a lot of elevation value. It's basically like, let's go back into it here. But you can also like, uh, yeah, the group back main sense. Uh, <laughs> Uh, you can also like generate um, the value for like, um, you can ask also uh, to summarize across all of it with a list of specific function and it will return it. So 
so I can go into it. So, so and it will return like the minimum, the, mi the mean, and the maximum over all the Zion natural park. So this is, if we are using quantitative data, you can pass a certain number of functions inside of a list, which could be tricky, remember that. I mean, uh, and then like, if you, up, oh, sorry, I went a bit too fast. You can do the same uh, with the grain data. You know, like uh, not, not the grain. This is a land cover data. Uh, you can group by ID and by level, though I, and uh, you will have uh, the. You will count the numbers of uh, pixels that have developed barren forest, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Because yeah, we are using a count. For... Okay. Importance the author, the author precise. If you are using a lot of polygon, here we are just using one. So. I mean, yes, <laughs> uh, but if you are using more, like you should use the extract package. Let's go here. And apparently like uh, it's designed to deal with a plenty of polygon and plenty of, um, of uh, and it's work well also with uh, SF. So I haven't explored it, but usually I'm fine with Terra, but if you are dealing with a lot of polygon, keep that in mind. So uh, we are going to end like the parts of uh, raster extraction. I just want to highlight something. So unlike SF uh, that will use uh, base R or deployers um, kind of verb that will provide method for base R uh, function like plots or a subset like the square bracket. Uh, the design of Terra is a bit different. Terra uh, use function. So that's why, like, sometimes I see a lot of people who can I extract uh, from uh, rasters. If you are going to use Terra, a uh, lot of time uh, you should use Terra function and not uh, Terra does not, the philosophy of it, even if it provides some, like we have seen with plot, it does not provide specific method for generic function. It just provides you function that you should use. Okay, so uh, we are still using, so here's yeah, a small example. Uh, we are taking like site, um, some data from um, SP data, which is basically like um, still, uh, I think it's is like, you know, a bike renting place where you have a certain amount of bike uh, and the data provide, it's coming from uh, OpenStreetMap and it's have been saved into the package SP data. So here, this is something like you should be familiar. Here, we are just loading data because it came from a package. And we are going to uh, change the coordinates reference system to the uh, correct one for uh, these places. And this is the new part. The first part uh, before rasterizing is we need to define our, our, our target rasters uh, or our templates. And here, like it's a bit more complicated. So first, we take the extent of our object. And see, even if extend is a function of um, Terra, it works well with an SF object. I was surprised about it. So let's investigate that a bit. Oops, so let's uh, ask what's his classes. See, it's in, uh, as we can see, it's obviously an SF, a simple feature collection of objects. And even if we ask, uh, the extent of it, I guess it will be written something like a bounding box. Copy. Yeah, it will send something that is spatial extent. Uh, that's basically x min, x max, uh, y min, y max. Uh, <laughs> it seems obvious, but a lot of time you have other way of thinking like, uh, I have seen north, east, south, west also which is basically uh, x, uh, y, max, x, max, y, uh, min, and x, min. So usually in R, it will be x, min, x, max, y, min, y, max. But for some other tools, sometimes it's, yeah, other combination. OK, then uh, we pass that to the same terror function. Should have that terror 
from zero. Just make it more easier. And then, um, yeah, it's a small trick. Like, I do not know if it's still useful because like if we check STCRS, we'll see that letters, but uh, we can see it. Yeah, it's not important because I think we'll see it in the next chapters. We have this uh, well-known text standard from coordinate reference system. And you can, it's, you can, this is like, this is indexable for a name. So if we do that, uh, we have it uh, in another format. So basically we just removed, uh, if I'm correct, the user inputs. Because like Terra does not need the user inputs, just need like this, this part. Okay, then we create this raster template, which is basically an empty raster at this point. And we're gonna uh, rasterize this, the, the, the cycle IRLSM uh, with our template. Like I should like show the object first. You generate like uh, an object that's uh, have a mean and max value, and we do not know. And if we plot it, yeah, can I run it of the plot? Well, I have bad testing colors. It just by default uh, will say like, does this cell have or do not have uh, a point? Okay, not very fancy, but. You can also obviously uh, specify some particular function. Here with the length, it will just do the count because it will uh, calculate the length of the object, which is basically a count. And I'll show you what it looks like. Uh, the third, you can also like, uh, because this every point is like a bike renting place where you can pick up a bike. So you have a certain number of bikes. So you can also uh, sum them and call this new field capacity. And then you can like have it. So let's show it here. Let's go here. And if I check my new raster, and I'm still using, by the way, the same template, the cell empty rasters that I've created. Uh, you see like it's, it's, it's zero to 249. And if you remember like the previous one, which is just counting the numbers of bike renting place, it just go well over. Okay. And rasterize, I didn't go too much into it as an argument touches that is useful when you are dealing with line or polygon borders. And you just want like, let's say, uh, to have information on all of the borders. I think it's practical because like sometimes like you just, uh, you do not want to, to cast the polygon to a line to do it. Question about that? Evan, like I think this is pretty basic raster and use, but keep in mind, like still, we are still using function provided by Terra package. Okay, special vectorization. Hmm. I have said it here, yeah, maybe I should have, like I should, yeah, also this is something like, why are we like sometime rasterizing stuff? Like we can also like see, if I go here, uh, I do not remember the name of object. So uh, if I check the object size um, of cycle, I RSM. Yeah, it's still a small object, but if I just check like the object side, uh, of this one, for example. Where, 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 where smaller? by like, uh, yeah, <laughs> multiple order of magnitude. This is one of our highlight of using rasters. It takes less space. Uh, it's easier on the computing side. Uh, you can argue now with computer being powerful, you don't need this kind of optimization. I will disagree. <laughs> more we are doing complicated stuff, more we need these little tricks. And if what you care is really just the presence absence, and you do not care the exact localization or rasterizing uh, densities or just putting a presence absence is super efficient. 
it's nearly unbeatable. <laughs> it was designed at the time where we did not have this powerful tool. And I still think it's still uh, useful. I don't know what, what's, what's your opinion on that. Like, I'm the only one who think it's, I think if you can spend less memory, you should uh, as, as, as a rule of thumb. Uh, but obviously you are losing data. You are using like the, the information on the present substance on a grid have well less information than the vectorized uh, vector solution, vector uh, representation. So here we are see how we can transform a raster. Yeah, you basically see two functions as point and as polygon. Both came from the Terra package. Pretty st straightforward. Um, let's go into it. So if you check LF, uh, we have a rasters uh, from uh, a class spot rasters. If we just do that, we know I have a vectors, but for of, of Terra object. And here, ST as SF, we are piping this uh, spot vector object, like just, uh, just that I have just returned as, uh, as an output. Uh, into STISF that will uh, save it into elevation points. And here we have an SF object. That's how you have plot. Okay. We can do the same. Uh, so one of the classic example, uh, when you have like a digitalization model is doing a uh, is a line. So this is, um, so here you are using as contour. I haven't mentioned it here. But uh, so it's draw you like this um, CL, like this, uh, this grid, like this, this little uh, stuff. They mentioned two other package that we will see probably later, which is raster biz and um, Tmap. That also have a function that transform a digital elevation model to control line, to ISO line. And now we are going to see like the last function, which is as polygon. So we can basically, yeah, we are loading a new um, raster file on the SD data. And we are gonna, if we use the default version, it dissolve it. So it's convert like the, um, let's, it's, it's, let's, we should have show what it's looking like. Uh, we can do that here. So I go here, let's do that. Oops. And I want to plot them so yeah what i have is my uh but this one i guess uh, oh yeah it's this one okay oh i can just and plot grain well Pretty nice color. And um, so this is the, I assume the default color of Terra. And uh, yeah, we're gonna, if I do that. Uh, we have a spot vector, so a, ve uh, a vector of um, Terra. And here I'm also converting it as an SF object to represent it. I don't know why it's not like me. <clears throat> yeah. And here yeah, you see like when the it was silt everywhere, it chose to dissolve it. This is an up, you can just add force if you want, and then it will draw like polygons of pixel, which is can be useful and can be not useful, depending on what you do. And that's it. So, question, remark. I'm losing you. All good. Nice. All good. Nice. Thank you. Yes. Any question? Uh, do we have someone next week?
to present. Oh, I'm, uh, am I dead? Isn't it there? We have no one. But I guess my Zoom crashed. I will stop sharing. Here, are you hearing me? <laughs> yes. Should be uh, handled by someone. Work with. I'm trying to read. Oh. Well, I work with multiple <laughs> projection system regularly, but uh, other can do it. It's no, it's no big deal. Do we have someone? We need someone. Who want to do it? I guess I can put myself again, but that's sad. Okay. Uh, I put myself, but if uh, someone wants to do it, feel free to change me. It's an important chapter, I agree. I hope I will do a good job from it. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Well, everyone, was good seeing you. Uh, hopefully it was good enough and uh, you learned something and you are more yes. confident confident using raster data. And yeah, what these chapters, like I think, provide you with 95% of what you are dealing with, raster vectors. This is good, thank you. Well, bye everyone. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. Bye, bye. Thank you. See you. And feel free to ask questions on the chat if you are trouble or whatever. Bye. Okay.